Hello to one and all again. We are now in the second phase of our inter introduction to limits, and in this second video we will examine direct substitution. Now that we've discussed the intuitive meaning of limits, we can develop other means of evaluating limits as efficiently as possible. The first of these methods is called the direct substitution method. As most of you have probably believed at first, limits can frequently be evaluated by direct substitution. In other words, many times it is exact to say that the limit as x approaches a of the function f of x will equal the value of f at a itself. This is true in particular for polynomials. For rational functions, in other words, for the quotient of two polynomials, for radical functions, so square roots, cube roots, etc., sine, cosine, tangent, and the other functions that are trigonometric, exponential functions, logarithmic functions, absolute value functions, and even combinations of all these functions listed above. However, very important warning is to note that direct substitution is only allowed within the function's respective domains. And by within, I mean inside the domain and not at their boundary. For example, let's evaluate the limit as x approaches 3 of x squared plus 2x minus 6. Now, first and foremost, we can recognize that y equals x squared plus 2x minus 6 is a second degree polynomial, so a quadratic, and its domain consists of all real numbers. x approaching 3 is therefore well within the domain, and direct substitution is allowed. So the limit as x approaches 3 of x squared plus 2x minus 6 is calculated by replacing x by 3. So 3 squared plus 2 times 3 minus 6 equals 9. Graphically, this means that as x approaches 3, y values of this parabola are heading towards 9. As a second example, let's evaluate the limit as x approaches 1 of x plus 3 over x plus 2. The function whose limit we are computing is a rational function, and in this case the domain excludes x equals minus 2, which would cause a division by 0. However, the limit we are performing is evaluated as x approaches 1, which is well inside the domain of the function. So once again direct substitution is allowed, and to compute the limit as x approaches 1, for the rational function x plus 3 over x plus 2, we can simply replace x values by 1, which would produce a result of 4 or 3. So again, graphically, this means that for x values that approach 1, the y value of the rational function is approaching 4 over 3. Let's evaluate a limit as x approaches 9 for the logarithmic function in base 10, calculate it at 11x plus 1. y equals log of 11x plus 1 is a logarithmic function, and it's defined as long as its argument, so the content of the log, stays positive strictly. This happens as long as x is greater than minus 1 over 11. We are evaluating a limit as x approaches 9. So we are once again well inside the domain of the function, and we can perform direct substitution. So as we do direct substitution, the limit as x approaches 9 of log of 11x plus 1 becomes the log of 99 plus 1, or log of 10, uh, or log of 100, pardon me, which happens to be a perfect value of 2 here. Now we're evaluating the limit as x approaches 1 of a function called e to the power x4 minus x squared. This function is a composition of a polynomial, a fourth degree polynomial in this case, 
x to the 4 minus x squared, with an exponential function. Both of these functions have domains that consist of all real numbers, so the composition also has a domain of all real numbers. Therefore, direct substitution is perfectly fair game, and we can evaluate the limit as x approaches 1 of the function by replacing all x's by 1's. In the end, e to the 0 equals 1. In examples we'll see in the future, we'll have to be much more careful about applying limits in situations such as, let's say, the following, where we have a limit where x heads towards 1 of 3x minus 3 over x cubed minus 1. The problem with this limit is that a division by 0 occurs when x is getting closer to 1. In the same manner, cos of x approaches 0 when x is approaching pi over 2. So the limit as x heads towards pi over 2 of x divided by cos of x could be a problem. As x approaches 4, 2 minus root of x also approaches 0. So in all three of these examples, divisions by 0 are looming in the background and are therefore not within the domain, but perhaps at the uh, border of a domain or at a point where a discontinuity may be occurring. We're going to have to approach these values of x in a slightly more delicate way uh, that we're going to see in future videos. Piecewise defined functions cannot be evaluated by direct substitution either, as we approach a next value where the rule changes. So if you remember, piecewise defined functions may have a different definition, left or right, of a certain x value. For example, let's consider the piecewise function that consists of the parabola x squared plus 2x for all x that are less or equal to 1, and then transforms into a root function, root of x plus 3, for, x, for x's that are greater than 1. It is true that f at 1 can be calculated by replacing x by 1. The first portion of the definition tells us that x squared plus 2x is to be used for x's that are 1 specifically, and therefore f at 1 would have a value of 3. However, it would be wrong to assume that the limit as x approaches 1 of the function can also be obtained by calculating f at 1. Remember that what we discussed, the numerical approach in the previous video, that the limit of as x approaches 1 is only well defined if both one-sided limits, so the left and the right-hand limits, produce results that are in agreement. The left-hand approach, x heading towards 1 minus, implies that f is evaluated using values of x that are less than 1 exclusively. Now, to the left of 1, the function's definition is, in fact, x squared plus 2x. This is a polynomial for which direct substitution can be applied, and this is how a result of 3 is obtained. Likewise, the right-hand approach, x heading towards 1 plus, implies that f is evaluated using values of x that are greater than 1 exclusively. Well, this time, since we are letting x approach 1 from the right, the function's rule is no longer x squared plus 2x, but rather root of x plus 3. This is a rational function. We're very far from problem in its domain. Uh, not a rational, but a radical function. Who would have issues at minus 3, but we are approaching 1. So again, we're well within its domain, and by direct substitution, we get a result of 2. So observe that the left-hand limit of the function as x approaches 1 is 3, which differs from the right-hand limit as x approaches 1 from the right, which is 2. And therefore, the limit as x approaches 1 of fx does not exist. Graphically, what we observe is a jump in the function. As we approach 1 from the left, the function's y values are heading towards 3. 
as we approach 1 from the right, the function's y values are approaching 2. It is this disagreement that forces us to say that the limit as x approaches 1 for the function doesn't exist, even though both one-sided limits do exist. Piecewise defined functions are therefore always best evaluated by examining its one-sided limits.